Welcome to this cold and dark start tutorial for the BAE 146. We'll follow the procedures set out in the aircraft manual from gate to runway. On the flight deck, our first job is to head up to the overhead panel and switch on both batteries. We'll now switch on the nav lights in the top right of the overhead panel. Now the no smoking and cabin emergency lighting to auto. Now in the top left of the panel, switch on the master switches for autopilot, avionics and your damper. We now switch on the anti-skid and the yellow and green lift spoilers. We'll set both bus tie switches to auto. Set the standby generator and standby inverter to R. Now switch on the APU generator. Switch on the inner left fuel pump for fuel flow to the APU. You can now start the APU and once it's available a green indicator light will appear to the lower left of the RPM dial. Head over to the air supply panel, switch on APU air and one of the two packs. With that done, switch the four engine anti-ice switches on at the bottom of the overhead panel. Now arm the flight deck emergency lighting. On the lower pedestal, engage both your dampers by pressing the YD button. You can now open the doors and start boarding passengers and cargo. Heading back to the overhead panel on the fuel section, set center tank transfer to auto. On the pressurization panel to the right, set the altitude to your cruising altitude. We'll now also switch on the ice detection systems. And we'll now head to the TMS on the bulkhead. You can see the current outdoor temperature displayed in the top right corner. We'll switch this system on and it works kind of like an old fashioned version of a perf page. If you hit takeoff, it will give you the ideal N1 percentage for takeoff in the current conditions. The TGT page will show you the ideal turbine gas temperature. You can either use these figures to set the M1 and TGT bugs manually or if you click the notepad here, it will automatically set those bugs for you as well as V-speeds based on your current flap setting. We'll now switch this system off before engine start. Heading up to the MCP, we'll now switch on the flight directors, as well as the navigation radio, and we'll also turn the switch to the on position. A guide to setting navigation frequencies, as well as setting up the rest of the autopilot panel can be found in my full flight tutorial, which is linked in the description below. Continuing the startup process, we'll switch on both VHF radios to the left and the right of the pedestal for ATC communications. We now want to retract the air stairs, so we'll temporarily switch on the AC pump. We can now retract the air stairs on the EFB. We now return the AC pump switch to the default off position. We'll now also close the other aircraft doors and remove the chocks. We'll now switch on the fasten seatbelt signs and the beacon lights and we're almost ready to start the engines. First we'll switch APU air off and also switch off both packs. At this point you would call for pushback but at London City there's no tug available so we'll just stay here for now. We'll switch on all four fuel pumps and we'll switch the engine start master switch to on. We'll select engine 4 as the first engine to start and hold down the engine start switch for one second. To move the throttle from fuel off to fuel on position I recommend using the fuel valves hotkey. Pressing this will set all four throttles to the fuel on position. Engine 4 will now start up with no problem. We can now repeat this process with the other engines so turn the dial and hold the start button down for one second. Starting the engines from right to left, fairly soon you'll have four good starts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
With all four engines started, return the starter dial to the center off position and switch off the engine start master switch. You can now switch off the engine anti-ice and just enable it later in flight if required. We'll now switch on engine generators 1 and 4. We'll now switch on APU air as well as both packs. We'll now set brake fans to auto and the engine 2 and 3 hydraulic pumps. Once the pressure reads 3000 psi, turn on the AC pump and PTU. On the ice protection panel, turn on all of the heaters. Returning to the main panel, we can now switch on the TMS. We'll also set it to takeoff mode. We'll click the load sheet again just to make sure the bugs are set correctly. On the transponder panel, set your squawk code, then set the transponder to TA mode. Set flaps to 18 for takeoff and switch on the taxi lights. Taxi out to the runway and once lined up, head down to the pedestal and hit the takeoff config button. If you hear no sound, the config is good. Returning to the overhead panel, switch the strobe lights on, as well as the landing lights. And that's it, you're ready to fly. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe as I make this kind of content fairly regularly. Take care, and I'll see you next time.